starch crops, corn, second largest source of biofuel feedstock due to the United, the United States dominance in ethanol production. We find the U.S. Corn Belt is the major source of ethanol. Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Minnesota. In the United States, more than 98% of the crop is treated with nitrogen fertilizers and 97% with herbicides. Corn crops have less fuel yield than sugarcane due to starch content versus fermentable sugars. The United States is using twice the land area versus Brazil to produce the same volume of ethanol. Sounds like we would like to be good trading partners with Brazil in the near future. Corn has greater shelf life, long periods, versus sugarcane. Sugarcane, you have about 24 to 48 hours to process the biomass. Wheat volume of ethanol is considerably less than that from corn. In the United States, less than 30% of ethanol from wheat comes from wheat. Spain and Germany also produce some ethanol from wheat. Most wheat is used for human consumption, of course, and very small growth has occurred over the last 10 years glo globally in this crop. Rye and barley, two relatives of wheat, are rarely used to make bioethanol fuel. Cassaba, or tapioca, is most, uh, mostly cultivated, uh, is the most cultivated crop in the sub-Saharan Africa. It's the second most grown crop in Africa, fourth in Southeast Asia, and fifth in Latin America, and seventh in Asia. It's a hardy crop, tolerant of poor soil and droughts, and starting to attract bioethanol production attention. Nigeria has identified it as the top bioethanol crop, and Thailand is starting to produce bioethanol from it. Oil seed crops. Rapeseed, primarily the feedstock of choice for biodiesel in Europe. It's commonly grown in rotation with cereal crops. Soybean, the dominant oilseed crop globally, with 215 million tons produced in 2005. Brazil, United States, and Argentina dominate the market. It's a nitrogen-fixing crop and enriches soil. Cargill and ADM dominate production since harvest is highly mechanized. Palm yields a very high level of oil per hectare. Malaysia and Indonesia dominate production, and production has increased 11% over the past decade. Brazil can significantly expand this crop in northern areas of its country. The demand for palm oil will increase in Europe, with Netherlands and the United Kingdom importing the most currently. Jotropha grows well on marginal and semi-arid lands. This is a bush which can be harvested twice annually and remains productive for decades. Livestock rarely browse with this life form. D1 Oils, that's a British firm, is experimenting with this crop and introducing it to India. India, I may add, in general, people uh, do prefer diesel engines. Microalgae, single cell forms, life forms, which have the potential to produce much oil. High yields can be grown in salt water where no competition with agriculture exists. Carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, uh, various nitrogen oxides required for growth in coal, petroleum, and natural gas power plants have an outlet for the byproducts. Cost of cultivating the current species will require research and development, and it is not currently economical. Animal fats, cattle, pig, fish, or chicken processing, and being used in fleet vehicles, biodiesel, by companies in this industry. It is very cheap feedstock, but not available in wide regions, obviously. Conclusions. United States Europe will want to extend the import of biofuels from the tropical climate countries. Sugar cane stands out as feedstock, that can produce a large amount of transportation fuel. Temperate climates will limit growth of biofuels, and a second generation of algae has tremendous potential as R&D continues. Second generation crops, essentially based on cellulose technology, and there we're considering cellulose, hemicelluloses, and uh, the aromatic resin lignin, the connective tissue, so to speak, that holds together shrubs, so they are actually then trees. Without lignin, you would simply have grasses. Uh, generally, uh, a hardwood sample has what perhaps 25% lignin. Hemicelluloses are uh, oftentimes fermentable, and those are smaller molecular weight uh, carbohydrates. Cellulose, of course, is a polyglucose. Poplar, switchgrass, bamboo, sugarcane, bagasse, 
hardwood waste, crop residues, as, such as corn, silver, can all be considered. Advanced algae technology is another part of the equation. New technologies for biomass conversions to liquid fuels, basic conversion technology options, cellulose conversion, A, thermochemical conversion, B, biochemical conversion, thermal, gasify the biomass into liquid fuel with low oxygen levels present. This is your syngas or Fischer-Tropsch process. Biochemical, with biotechnology, it's possible to customize fermentation organisms and to study cellulase enzymes, which are getting cheaper every decade. Lignin separation from the cellulose hemicellulose content in plants is also an intensive area of research. In general, R&D is focusing on combustion, heating, gasification, syngas, pyrolysis, bio-oil, and hydrolysis. <coughs> pyrolysis, three subclasses which involve conventional, fast, or flash technologies. Pyrolysis techniques currently produce char and alkali metals, which damage engines. There is 25% water. Bio-oil can be used in boilers, stationary diesel engines, industrial turbines, and Stirling engines. Acid hydrolysis. Uh, Germany, early 20th century, developed methods using dilute sulfuric acid to hydrolyze cellulose. The United States, Russia, Japan have used this approach, but only a few facilities exist. This is a type of research that every year there promises to be a breakthrough and yet uh, not in significant production. Enzyme technology, microbial digestion, R&D focus on hemicellulose pentosis, conversion to fermentable sugars. Some microbes have been identified and are being developed. Thank you for listening to this lecture.